Hey, welcome to today's video where we're going to be covering how to create a website. Now, one of the main questions you may be having at this point is, do you really need a website? Well, let me tell you that I've been doing this eight years now. I've been doing online marketing eight years, and I can't think of one example, one single example, where somebody is making big money without a website. It just doesn't happen, okay? So you absolutely need to have a website. Now the second question is, should you get a free website or should you host it yourself? And that's a very, very valid question. And for that one, I'm not going to give the answer for you. It's based on your needs, okay? So the advantage of having your own website as opposed to a free site, which I've created a video on before, which you can go take a look at at the top left of the video there, I've shown how to create a, a free website before. The reason why you would want a paid website is because you can do whatever you want with it. It's your freedom to set it up exactly how you want. Now, when you go with the free version, you have a lot of limitations, okay? So there's certain things that you can and can't do. But one of the main things you can't do is you usually can't make money if you have a free website. That's the reason why these companies are willing to give you a free website is so that they can make advertising from the traffic that you generate. So if you're generating any kind of traffic online, then you should be the one making money from that traffic. And when we consider that setting up a website and the hosting costs really only encumber about $5 a month, chances are having your own self-hosted solution is the best option for you, okay? So in this video, we're gonna cover how you can have a website that you own and make money from it. Before I get carried away blabbing about how exciting it is to have your own website, I wanna briefly go over the expectations that you should have at this point in the video, okay? So after we finish this video, you will know absolutely everything that I know about creating a website, okay? And with that knowledge, in about half an hour to 45 minutes, you can create a website that looks exactly like the one you're looking at right now. So this is brennanmace.com, it's my actual website. I'll leave a link to it at the top left there, um, so that on your own leisure you can go check it out for yourself. Now, of course, I have a lot of posts that I've personally written in here, but aside from the actual posts, this whole design and layout, you can easily pull off for yourself, okay? Now, the first step to this process is to get hosting for your website and set up WordPress. Now, I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time in this video. The reality is that all you need to do is sign up an account at HostGator and make sure that you use the coupon code get 25 off your bill because when you use that coupon code hostgator will give you a 25 percent discount on your hosting order so once you have your hostgator account then you just come into your control panel and you click on this w button the get started with wordpress today where you can install wordpress for a domain of your choice you can find a video link to this whole process by clicking on the link at the top right of this video or in the video description below. Uh, with a video, this process is pretty easy. Uh, just remember that when you're filling out your order that you remember to enter the coupon code GET25 off your bill because then HostGator will give you a 25% discount on your whole hosting order. If you're gonna buy this anyways, you may as well get that discount. Once you install WordPress, you are ready to rock. We're gonna be starting to work on the website that people are actually gonna see online. So this is pretty cool stuff. Now the first thing you wanna do with your new WordPress installation is you wanna install a theme. Now to do this, you go in your left sidebar on the left side here, and you hover over appearance. When you're hovering over appearance, you're gonna get a drop down menu and you wanna click on themes. Now when you get into your themes options, you have a few themes that are already activated. Now what you should know about these themes is they're by default activated on every newly installed WordPress site. So it's very unprofessional to leave this theme activated. You're much better getting a different theme. 
Now, if you're on a real shoestring budget and you want to get a free one, then there's this button here at the top center. When you click on that button, you're going to be taken to a page where you're going to see a ton of different theme options, all of which you can install for free. And yes, you heard me correctly. All of these themes you can use on your own website completely free of charge. Now, if you want to go a bit more pro, a bit more advanced than a free theme, then you can look at a paid theme option. Now, my favorite, my favorite uh, WordPress themes that I found uh, available, the professional themes, is written by a company called StudioPress. Now, StudioPress creates a bunch of really cool themes, and they're the themes that I pick for my own websites now. The one I'm using for brendamace.com is a Studio Press theme called Magazine Pro. So when you look back at my website, you probably think this is a pretty cool looking website, right? But what you really don't see with this website is how ridiculously easy it was to create with the premium WordPress theme that I chose. So if you actually spend a little bit of money and get a professionally designed WordPress theme that costs some money, you can really shortcut your workload and make it really easy for you to create a professional looking website. So once you've chosen and activated your WordPress theme and set it up, there's gonna be a couple modifications that you're really gonna to wanna to make to your website. And to do these changes, you're gonna to have to go to the left side on your WordPress sidebar. So in your WordPress sidebar, you wanna scroll down to the very bottom and hover over general. Okay, settings, hover over settings, pardon me, and then click on general. And when you click on that general button, it's gonna ask you for some information, like the site title you want, your site slogan. Nothing too complicated to do here. You just wanna fill out those top two descriptive boxes and then move on. The next box that you're gonna to wanna to click on is permalinks. So permalinks is at the bottom of the settings tab there. You wanna click on that, and you wanna do this very simple change. So by default, WordPress has your permalinks as this P equals, and basically this looks really ugly. So every time you create a new post in your WordPress theme, it's gonna create a link that looks like this, and then it's gonna say P equals one for your first post, then P equals two, then P equals three, and so on and so on. And it really doesn't look that pretty, and it's very SEO unfriendly as well, so it absolutely should be changed. Now the easiest way to change this and what I recommend changing it to is just clicking on the post name button. So click on the post name button and it's gonna give you a link that's gonna be a lot more SEO friendly and it's gonna look a lot more professional. It's just gonna have the title of the post after the domain name finishes, okay? So click on post name, click on save, and then the next thing, the last thing you wanna do is you wanna click on reading. Now, you may not actually wanna click on reading, but here's a decision that you have to make, okay? So my website, brennamace.com, is a blog, okay? There's what's known as a blog and then a static website. Now, at this point in time, you have to make a choice of whether you wanna have a blog that has posts that are basically ordered by the date that they're published or whether you wanna have a static website. And you can have either of these with WordPress it's a simple 10 sec second switch, okay? So for a blog, you would just leave it as is with the front page displaying your latest posts in the order of the date uh, that they are published, right? Now your other option is to click a static page and then select a specific page to be shown as your home page. Now that would essentially turn your WordPress blog into a static page website. Now the choice is up to you. They're both great options. I'm particularly preferring the blog format, but I know a lot of people that prefer a website format instead. So if you prefer to have a static website, then you're going to be wanting to create pages instead of posts. So you see this pages button here. You're going to want to be creating pages when you have new content, and you're going to want to select one of those pages to be your home page with a static page. Now, if you decide to have a blog instead, which is my preference, then you're gonna be wanting to create posts and you're gonna leave this as is. 
One of the first things that you're really gonna wanna do is make your website look really cool and professional, right? Because without that, what's the point of even having a website? Now the main advantage of having a site is that you gotta position yourself as the expert. But if it doesn't look professional, then you're not going to be positioned as an expert. So it would really make this a whole waste of time. Now the biggest piece of advice I have for you is that most people, when they create a website, they use all their primary real estate spots for advertising. And you're gonna take a quick look in the back end of my WordPress theme here. You're gonna see that you have lots of opportunities and lots of spots to place advertising. And the main one is this one right here, right? It says you can put advertising in the header right, or you can put your logo in there. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of putting advertising here. So it would be at this spot in the blog. You see at the top where I have my logo, where it says Brendan Mace, a lot of people would throw AdSense ads on here. And yes, if you did that, you would make a buck or two from advertising, but you'd really be missing out on the bigger picture. Because if instead you decide to make your site look more professional, and instead you use this as an opportunity to build your branding, you're gonna make way more sales in the long run from people that trust and respect you. Because nobody's gonna respect spammy advertising being jammed down their throat, okay? So having a really cool and professional logo and some graphics to go along with your website is really going to lead to really big results for your website. Now the place that I go to for all my graphic designs is a website called Fiverr.com. Now the whole premise behind Fiverr is that you can get tasks done for five bucks, okay? So if you do a Fiverr search for header, you're gonna find a ton of people that are willing to create really cool header website graphics for you for only five dollars. Now if you go back to my website, you can see this logo here. I'm pretty happy with it, right? So it says Brendan Mace, and it shows me kind of living the whole laptop lifestyle. I'm vacationing with the palm tree, and I'm by the beach, and I'm enjoying myself in the logo, and it has my name really front and center. This graphic was created on Fiverr for five bucks. So you can find, even though it's cheap, you can find really high quality projects and get really good work done for only that $5 price tag. So if you don't wanna create these graphics yourself, Fiverr is a great option for you. The next thing you should be aware of is something called WordPress plugins. Now you can access your WordPress plugins page just on your left sidebar here. So when you click on plugins, you're gonna get a whole list of the plugins that you have. Now when you start a new WordPress site, you're really not gonna have that many plugins. But we're gonna take a quick look at the plugins that I use for my brennanmace.com blog, okay? So there's a few here that I highly recommend and you don't need most of them, but I always recommend installing a plugin called W3 Total Cash. This is a plugin that's 100% free and all that it does is basically speed up your website, so when visitors come to your website, it loads faster for them. Now, not only is this a better user experience, but it also leads to better rankings as well, because when you have a better user experience, then Google will reward you with better search engine rankings. So W3 Total Cash is an absolute must. Now, a lot of people go crazy when it comes to plugins, but you really don't need that many, so I'm only gonna mention two more, and then we're gonna move on to more interesting and engaging stuff. So one of the last two is this plugin called WP Smush. It's also 100% free, and similar to the last plugin, just makes your site run faster. It's completely free, no brainer, definitely add it to your site. The other one's called WP Front Scroll Top, and you can see it right now at the bottom right of my page. It's this little faded out button that you can click at any time, and it scrolls to the top of the page. Now again, this is really not crucial. It's not a plugin that you need, but in my opinion, it adds a little bit of professionalism to the site, and it's also free. So anytime something is free and it adds uh, a better experience to your visitors, it's just a no-brainer to add on. 
Now it's time for the bread and butter of your website. So the most important thing of your website after we get the design taken care of and all that initial setup stuff is just the content itself. And to create this, all you need to do is hover over posts on your left sidebar, which you can see there, and then click on add new. So we're gonna pretend here that you're doing a WordPress blog. And if you wanted to do a website instead, it would be the exact same thing, except instead of selecting posts, you would be hovering over pages and clicking on add new there. So it's the exact same. Anytime you create a new post, you wanna have some kind of title here. Now, the most important thing is that you make sure that your title is interesting and engaging because if it doesn't draw people's attention, nobody's gonna read your stuff. Now some really good ideas of places to go to find good titles is communities in your niche area. So for me, I look at this website called inbound.org to get ideas from people that have created lots and lots of different blog posts. And I won't necessarily copy these blog titles word for word, but I could use these as inspiration for the title that I create. Another really good option is let's say you're in the fitness industry or weight loss, you can literally just look up headlines from magazines because these magazines usually make millions upon millions of dollars and they spend hours from professional marketers deciding what to write for their titles. So you know that if they've created a huge headline on a major magazine, then you can be damn sure that that's a title that draws attention. Okay, so we're just gonna move forward here and switch back to the Simple to Build website, which is actually a site that I registered specifically for this video. And I really wanna show you now how ridiculously easy it is to set up a cool looking website. Now, the first thing we wanna do is create a header and upload it to our theme, which is something we talked about earlier. So in the last couple minutes, I created this header from scratch using a tool called MoonPixler. Now it's not the best looking header in the world. And in fact, I would never feel comfortable having this header permanently on a site that I own, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So it's something that I just scratched together for this video. And now if I was gonna to want to do a better job, I'd either spend more time on the header or I'd outsource it to Fiverr in the next couple minutes. And because I really trust the expertise and skills of image designers a lot more than my own when it comes to image editing, I would outsource this process to Fiverr. Okay, so now that we have our header image, we're gonna go into appearance, which is on the left side, uh, left sidebar of your WordPress dashboard and click on themes. When you're into the theme section of your website, you wanna find where your theme is and where it's activated. So mine here is Magazine Pro Theme, and you wanna click on Customize. Okay, so when you click on Customize, you just wanna to get to the section of your theme customization where you can edit the header. So to edit the header in this one, it's the second one down, it's right here. It says header image. So we're gonna click on that and I already added it, but to add it again or to add it for the first time, I would click on add new image and then I would just click on upload files and upload the file here, which would make it available in my media library and then I could just set it into my website, okay? So once I've completed this process, I'll have my header fully in there. And you'll notice it's not the best looking header in the world. Um, but if you just spend the five bucks on Fiverr, you spend a bit more time, you can have a really cool looking header, okay? So now if we go back to the homepage of our website, you're already gonna see that we have some progress on the way. We have our header image in the middle of the theme. Now there's a few things we still wanna do, obviously. We need to have some blog posts in here and we need to have some kind of sidebar that's either gonna make us money or make us look like a professional. The next stage is gonna be about building out our sidebar for our new website. So we wanna create stuff on our sidebar that's gonna make us look more professional. Now the first thing we're gonna add are these social sharing buttons. Now, I hate to break it to you, but very few people are actually gonna click on these buttons and share your blog. Now I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's still important to have the sharing buttons because even though people don't press them that often, they build the idea of authority. Usually authority sources provide you with social networks to share their stuff, regardless of whether people actually share them or not. 
So we wanna add these to your website to build up your credibility and make it look a bit more professional. Now this is a free WordPress plugin and you're gonna see this a lot, that plugins, there's a ton of them. Uh, most of them are cheap or free and they can add a lot of cool design to your site. So the first one is simple social icons. If you do a Google search for that, simple social icons, you'll find it as the first result. Just click on that one there, download it, and then we're gonna upload it to our website. It's very easy to upload a WordPress plugin and you're gonna be doing this a lot if you have a WordPress site for a while, trust me, because there's lots and lots of plugins out there that will catch your attention. So to do this, you just need to hover over plugins and click on add new. And then you just need to click on this small button at the top that says upload plugin. When you click on that button, it's going to ask you to choose a file. So you just need to find where you downloaded that simple social icons plugin to on your computer. So for me, I put it on my desktop, it's right here. Okay, and then I just click on install now. And once I do that, it's just gonna take a second and I'm gonna have it uploaded in. So I clicked on that. And then once you install the plugin, you just need to click on this button, this activate plugin button one more time to make sure that it's loaded into your website. Now, after we finish uploading this plugin, we're actually going to make it visible on our sidebar. So to edit the sidebar of our new website, we need to go to appearances, hover over appearances, and this time we wanna click on the subcategory widgets. So in our widget subcategory, you're gonna see the editor that you have on the right here, and we saw this earlier, where you can edit your main sidebar area. So you can see it in the primary sidebar. So we need to put stuff in there so that it'll show up in our sidebar of our website. Now the first thing that we wanna do is because we uploaded that Simple Social Icons plugin, it shows up in this list of things that we can add. So we're just gonna drag this Simple Social Icons and we're gonna move it all the way up to the sidebar and just let it slide right in there. Now it's gonna ask you for a title. Without a title, it won't show anything. On my brennanmace.com, you saw that I use the title connect with me, dot, dot, dot. Um, but could be anything you want, just sort of directs and brings attention to the social buttons that you offer. So I'm just gonna click on save here, okay? Now the one thing you would wanna do if you're doing this for real is that you would want to connect all of these, like add your Google+, your Instagram link, your LinkedIn link, whatever social networks you wanna include on your website, you would need to actually put those links into this editor right here so that it would actually go to those sources, right? So after that, when you're done, you just click on the save button. And then if we go back to our home page, you're gonna see that I have the connect with me title. And because I haven't put any links in there, it's not gonna so show my social sharing options yet. So instead, let's add one in here so you can see what it looks like, okay? So here it says Facebook. I'm just gonna put HTTPS, uh, Facebook, and then Macefits, because that's a Facebook page that I have. And I'm gonna click on Save. And now if we go back to the home page, you're gonna see that Facebook's in there, right? So if we wanna do a bunch more, we're just gonna to have to go through all the social networks that we have and add in our links. Now some of you at this point are probably have the concern that you haven't built up a following at all, so why would you wanna let people know that your following is rather minimal? Now the reality here is that people love following startups, believe it or not. People love following journeys. And one great example of that, there's a guy named Mike from Maine uh, if you're in the internet marketing space, you've probably heard of him. But if you actually go to his website, mikefromain.com, you'll notice that he has his income reports listed, which is also something that I do on my website. And if you look at his recent income reports, he makes like over $30,000 per month quite regularly and usually hovers around that number with some months that are just exceptional, right? But if you actually go back a couple months, uh, not a couple months, sorry, a couple years in Mike from Maine's progress, you'll notice that at the beginning he was really having like $1,000 months, like minus months, you know, like he wasn't making very much in the beginning of his development of his internet marketing career. And then all of a sudden he exploded. 
And he kind of had a transparent focus from the very beginning where he showed people exactly what he was doing. He showed people exactly what he was making and people loved it because that's what people love. They love following the journey. If you're not successful right now, it's almost a benefit to you for this kind of a situation because people get to see your growth and get to go along in that journey with you. It's gonna build a lot of empathetic reactions because what that image tells people is that somebody has gone from scratch and become mega successful. It kind of gives that empathetic belief and that reality that they, the, the watcher or the reader, can also do this, can also go from scratch and build something big, okay? So I highly encourage you, show your progress, show how many followers you have if it's bad, it's still good. <laughs> Anytime you go really transparent, it's a good thing because people are going to gravitate to you for various reasons. And one of those reasons is because they're gonna to wanna to watch a success story unfold. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to add is some posts on the sidebar for visitors to click over to. Now this is really important not just to boost the profitability per visitor by getting them to click on additional posts, but Google actually factors this into their ranking system as well. They wanna know how many pages per visit are users clicking on. And the more they click on, the more Google's gonna reward you with better rankings. So you absolutely should have links constantly to other posts that you've written, and they should be really available and also look click-worthy. So having images really boosts click-through rate, and I'm gonna show you how to do all of this inside of your WordPress dashboard. But before we can have posts on our sidebar, we need to actually have some published posts. So we need to go ahead and create some posts for our blog. Now to do this, you just hover over posts and click on add new, as we talked about earlier. And then we need to create a title that's interesting and engaging and actually makes people wanna read our stuff. Because if you get this wrong, everything else will fail. You can have the best written blog post, most interesting blog post in the world, but if you don't have a good title, people aren't even going to start to read it, okay? So we need something really interesting. Now I'm gonna paste this one in here and give you a little teaser because this is the YouTube video that I'm actually planning to create next for my channel. Um, but I wanna go over basically the structure of a powerful headline. So there's a few formulas that I've used in the past for marketing, and they're pretty big staples when it comes to copy. Now copy is known as how to get people's interest with writing, right? That's what copy is. So one of the main formulas is you wanna tell people that they can get a big result in a short time and easily. That's kind of a standard internet marketing formula that works really, really well. And everybody wants to hear these things. They wanna know that something's gonna work, it's gonna be really easy to do, and they can get results fast. And this doesn't even just apply to internet marketing, it applies to pretty much every niche or market. Anytime somebody has a problem that they need solved, they wanna know these three things. And it doesn't need to be in this order, it can be in a different order, but including these three, three components is going to build the interest in your readers dramatically. Another good idea, like I said, was to look at the magazines or other communities online where they're already posting interesting headlines, but coming up with some good headlines to work with. I'm gonna quickly go over to Chrome here. I wanna quickly talk about a little bit of a tool that I use uh, that makes this process easier for me. It's called Headliner Pro, uh, and I've used it before. And basically, this is a, a Google extension, a Google Chrome add-on extension, I think it's called, right? And what it does, it's called Headliner, and I think it costs a few bucks, but you basically enter in what the topic of your blog post is gonna be about. So let's say, for example, that I'm gonna do like keyword research, and then what this tool will actually do is it'll autofill a ton of different headlines that you can use with that topic keyword. So if you're really struggling with ideas of how you can create interesting headlines, you might wanna pick this up. I think it's 30 or 40 bucks and it'll make this process a lot easier for you. Almost as important as the post title is what you write in the first 100 words and I'm serious about this because studies have actually shown that the average length of a time that a visitor will spend on a new website before deciding to leave or not is five 
seconds. So if you can't get their attention and their interest in five seconds, they're not going to stay there. Now there's a few tricks, a few really clever psychological tricks you can do here that can cause visitors to say, aside from just having really good content, which is kind of my main recommendation if anything, right? But one thing that works really well, uh, and this is the beginning of a post that I'm gonna be writing here. Uh, one thing that works really well is what's called an open loop. Now you may have heard of an open loop before, but you've definitely experienced one, okay? TV shows do this all the time. An open loop is where somebody gives you incomplete information or they hint towards something in the future, but then they don't give you the rest of the story, you know? So it drives our psychological need to complete incomplete information, okay? So TV shows do this every week when you're watching their show, and at the end of the episode, there'll be like a really suspenseful, crazy moment, and then they'll say, hey, if you wanna figure out what happens, tune into our episode next week. Now, TV shows really learned uh, really early on that this can dramatically increase the amount of visitors that continue to watch their show on a regular basis. Now, this open loop phenomenon, we can easily apply to our marketing or our blog writing or any kind of basically online business in really a lot of effective ways. Now, the way I do it with my posts lots of times is I'll hint to something I'm gonna talk about later in the blog post, uh, but I won't give a specific about what I actually will talk about. So you can see that here. I say, this post actually reveals my main tricks for building a 5K per month business. I'm serious. It even includes the number one secret to auto automating 90% of your tasks. More on this later, okay? So I'm basically telling people that are reading my blog, I'm gonna have something really cool, some real giveaway that could change their lives, could change their business, but they need to keep reading to be able to figure out what that is. So having some kind of open loop at the start of your post is really going to dramatically boost how many people continue to read your full post, which is really the goal in the beginning. Then I like to have some nice stuff that appeals to kind of the dream, and this is all 100% true, but people love to hear benefits. They don't wanna hear number crunching like, oh, I got a 7% open rate or a 5% click-through rate on my emails or whatever. People like, that's cool and everything, but what people really wanna hear is how can this change my lifestyle? That's what people wanna know. So I say things like in the last nine months, I've been to Cuba, the Okanagan, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, San Andreas Island, and Medellin, which is 100% true. Uh, but that's what people wanna know is they, if they wanna do uh, stuff online, they wanna know how it's gonna change their life, what is gonna be the real impact to their lifestyle. Okay, to top things off, I have ticks printed for Panama City next week, I'm very excited, and Thailand the following month. Believe me, we are going to travel everywhere. Here's a pic of us partying in Medellin. So I don't have the pic here yet, and the reason for that is because I wanna show you how you can add pictures to your blog posts. If you look at the top of your post editor, you're gonna see a lot of icons here that look very similar to like Microsoft Word. So this is kind of your editor, your space, to add elements to your blog post. So you can easily bold things by clicking on this B button for bold. You can make it italics by clicking on the I. You can do strike throughs. Uh, you can turn it into bullets like I did here by clicking on this bulleted list. Uh, you can do a numbers list instead of a bulleted list. Uh, you can turn it into a quote, which is gonna show up differently depending on your theme. Um, you can add horizontal lines to your posts. All this kind of cool stuff, right? You can align stuff on the right. You can align it regularly on the left, in the middle. There's lots of crazy things you can do. Uh, there's a few more I have to show you before we get moving on. Uh, so one of them is, let me get rid of this first. Oh, that's hard to get rid of. Okay, so one of them uh, that we haven't talked about is this link. So you can add links in here. So I really recommend linking as much as possible. So anytime you see some text, in your blog post that's relevant to something else you wrote somewhere or a video you created somewhere, create a hyperlink. Because the more you can get people engaging with your stuff, the more trust you're building, the more likely they're gonna be to buy from you, the more likely they are for uh, any kind of positive reaction that you want from your followers. And additionally, Google's really gonna look uh, favorably towards you linking your stuff 
and also people looking at more than just one page of your stuff. So something like this, I could easily link over some other piece of content that I wrote. I'm just gonna go to my main site for now, uh, just to show you how this would work. So I just click on the link button at the top of the editor, which is that button right here. And then I would click in my link. So this is just my main website here. And I always click on this open link in a new tab, and you should too. This is something you should always do. So it says open link in a new tab. What that means is if you don't have this checked, then when somebody clicks on your hyperlink, it's gonna take them to this page, but it's gonna take them off the page that they're currently on. Whereas if you click open link in a new tab, then when they click on the link, it's gonna open a new tab on their browser, but then it's also gonna keep them on the same page that they're reading, okay? And the reason why that's important is because all of those things we've been talking about, length of time that a user stays on a blog post, how many posts they visit, all those kind of things are gonna be increased when you start adding tabs instead of removing uh, people from the page that they're currently on. So you should always do this and you should especially do it if you're linking off your website. So if I went to one of my YouTube videos or something, I would definitely want to have this in a new tab so that they don't leave my blog and ruin my user metric numbers, like how long they stay on my website. All right, so now let's add the picture to our blog post because one thing that we absolutely must do with posts is add pictures. Not only is this going to look more professional, but it's actually proven that people stay on posts longer when they have pictures included. So if you look at my post, I see here that I say, here's a pic of us partying in Medellin. So that would be the right spot for us to have a picture of us partying. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to click on the upload files button. Okay, so it might be on media library by default, but you need to click on upload files and select file. So you need to actually have this picture on your computer first before you upload it, and then you find it on your computer to upload, okay? So it needs to be on your computer. I usually just put it on my desktop to make this easier, and then you choose it from there. Now, once you get it uploaded, there's a quick thing that you're gonna have to do, okay? So I have my picture in here. First thing you're gonna wanna do is change this title. So it might be something crazy here depending on where you got your image from, but it should be a keyword that's relevant to the kind of post that you're writing. And this is actually really important because Google is going to give you some boosted points if it's a relevant image and if it's titled to be a relevant image to the topic that you're writing about. So let's say something like digital nomad in Medellin. So you don't want to keyword stuff to the point where you're just including the keywords to get some Google love. So you kind of want to make it unique, but at the same time, include a keyword about the post that you're writing about. Okay, so D Digital Nomad in Medellin, and I don't really need to bother filling in any of these texts. Um, it is actually a tiny bit of a boost to add this to the alt text as well, but that's entirely up to you whether you want to do that. Uh, alignment, none. But notice here if I did left or center or right, what this would do is I would have my image on the, if I said left, for example, I would have my image on the left and I would have my text wrapped around to the right. Uh, now I don't do that too often. Usually I just have the image stand by itself, but occasionally it may be useful to wrap images with text. So that's something to know about. And you should turn off this link to, okay? Where it says link to, it's linking to the media file. This is just like really annoying if people accidentally click your image and then it takes you to a page with just the image on it. If you're going to have a link on your image, you should have it a customer and link to something meaningful, link to something worth seeing. So if the image has like a click here, graphics on it or something, then this is where you'd want to put the customer in and put an actual link in there. But usually I just have this linking to none, linking to nothing, okay? It's just, I just want it for the visual aid and the picture. And the size, I usually like to go as big as possible and then I can always adjust it in the post, which I'm gonna show you now, okay? So I'm just gonna insert this into the post. 
Now, one thing you're gonna notice with your images is this is too big of a picture for my post. It's 962 pixels is the size of the regular image, but my theme really only supports about 600 pixels before it looks too wonky, big and wonky for the rest of the post. So you click on the image to adjust the size and you just go to this top left button here and you can scroll and change the pixel dimensions. And like I said, I like to get mine to around 600 pixels, okay? And that's gonna fit in better for my blog post. If you're wondering about these people, these are a couple friends that we met in Medellin uh, that came out and partied with us. So it's just a picture that is about what I said I was gonna be talking about. So I added the picture in here, I changed the pixel dimensions, and now I have my image. It was as simple as that. So you can take pictures from your Facebook profile. You can take your pictures from Creative Commons websites. There's lots of different options and sources of where you can get pictures. And then once I'm all done, I could click on the publish button. Now, one question that people might have at this point is how do I add videos? If I wanted to add like a YouTube video, for example, this is actually really easy to do now. Before you needed to know some code to be able to do this but now WordPress has recently released an update where all you need to do is drop the link of your video. That's seriously all you need to do. So let me show you here. Uh, I'm gonna go search for my girlfriend's channel, uh, but basically all you need to do is go to the video that you want and then click on the link at the top. So when you click on that link and then in your WordPress editor, all you have to do is drop that link in there and boom, WordPress is going to add the video in there for you, okay? So that's all that there is to it. So now when we're all done here, we've written out our whole post and we have everything in here, we just click on the publish button, but there's one quick thing we wanna do first, and that's we need to add a category. So anytime you wanna add a category for your website, you just click on this add new category button, and you wanna have categories here that are gonna have lots and lots of different posts on that topic right on that topic area so let's say here i'm talking about how i earn over five thousand per month let's say i'm going to create a uh, category on tutorials so i'm creating a tutorial post on how to make five thousand dollars per month and i just click on add new category and then when i do that it's going to show up in here and it's going to be all checked now we just click on the publish or update button. It's in blue and it's on the right side. And then we have our blog post live, okay? So once we click this, I'm gonna show you what it looks like live on our actual website and you're gonna see it here. And then there's gonna be a couple more changes that we need to make. So you're gonna notice here, I have it live here. I have my link in here. And when I click my link, it goes to a separate tab and I have my picture here, and I have my video. Everything that I created in the blog post editor is still here, which is great, great news. We still need to finish off this sidebar here, and we also need to do something else, which I'm gonna be talking about in a second, and that's we need to create a navigation, a header navigation here, and we need to create a featured post image, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do both of those things. So first, let's create our navigation for this website. Now to do this, we just need to go to our appearance and then themes again. And then once we get there, we have our magazine pro, uh, but this time instead we wanna go to the subcategory header or menus actually rather, excuse me. We wanna click on the menus subcategory. So when you click on that menus, nav menu subcategory, it's gonna give you options to create your navigation. Now. This is gonna be important functionally, but it's actually gonna look a lot better for your website as well. So we're just gonna call this menu the home page. So one thing you'll notice is that you have lots of different options to add to this navigation bar. You don't just need to have your post categories. You could have custom links. So on my navigation for my brendamace.com site, you'll notice that I have a link to my YouTube channel. So when people click on that, it actually just takes them to my YouTube channel. And then I have different pages, like a specific page that I created. And then of course, I have all of my post titles. So one thing that I absolutely recommend that you do for sure is that you have your categories on your navigation menu. So right now we just have one. Uh, it's the tutorials category that we just created. So we would check that category and we would click on add to menu. Now the only reason we have one is because we only have one post right now. But over time, as I started to add more and more posts, I would be adding categories as well. And I would want a few to populate on my navigation. 
Now once I have that in there, uh, the one thing I have to do here is I have to select where I'm going to add it to. So for the theme location, I actually select the secondary navigation menu. because so The primary navigation menu, in my opinion, loads onto an area of the page that isn't aesthetically pleasing. So the secondary navigation menu, in my opinion, is the nicer area to put it. And I don't put it in both, I just put it in the secondary navigation. And then I click on Save Menu, okay? So now when you do that, we're gonna go back to our page here. And you're gonna see that our category here, we have this navigation bar now, and we have our one link. So over time, as we add more categories, we're actually gonna fill up this navigation bar with more things, like an about me on the side, more categories, and anything else that could benefit us for visitors on the page. Now, no matter where people go on this website, they're always gonna have this navigation bar. So whatever you put here is very, very important, okay? Now we're gonna go back into our blog post that we created and we're gonna create a featured image. Now this is really easy to do, but it's also very, very important, okay? So I'm gonna click on this one right here, which is live. Adding the featured image is actually really easy to do. You just scroll down to the bottom here and you're gonna see publish, categories, tags, and then you're gonna see the featured image spot of your post, okay? It's right at the bottom right. You just click on this button for set featured image and you have a couple options. You can either select a picture that's already in your media library, or you can upload a new picture. So in this case, I'm just gonna reuse this picture that we used for our post, the Digital Mad in Medellin, and I'm gonna set it as the featured image. Now when we do this, it's gonna have an impact on the rest of our blog where we have our featured image displayed, which I'm gonna show you right now. So now that that's the featured image, I'm gonna click on Update, and you're gonna see right here in a second, after I complete that in there, if we go back to my website homepage, you're gonna see that I have my featured image right on my homepage next to my post title, okay? So whatever we put in the featured image is gonna show up right here. But it's also gonna show up in our sidebar as well once we set this all up. So Genesis includes this really cool thing you can add to your sidebar, and it's called Feature Posts. Now, if you're creating a static website, you'd be working with featured pages instead. So you have the two different options, one's for page and one's for posts. Like I said, we're working with posts here, so this is the one we're gonna use. And you just drag this over, okay? So you have this available widget, and you move it over to your primary sidebar right below the social icons. And then once you get it in there, then you would just uh, have some kind of title here. So for right now, I'm gonna say featured posts but you could have something cooler here. Do something cool with copy, maybe say badass posts or something more interesting, okay? And then you wanna select how many posts you want displayed on your site sidebar. Now we only have one right now, so only one's gonna display, but this is really for like, what's the maximum amount of posts that are gonna be shown. So I like to have this at either four or five, okay? And then you're gonna select how do you decide which posts are gonna be shown? Now the most simple way to do this are just the most recent posts, uh, but another great option is by amount of comments because generally the posts that have a higher amount of comments are more popular and you really want people to see your coolest, most badass stuff, okay? So either one of these is okay. I'm just gonna stick with date for now. And then you go down here and you absolutely wanna click on the show featured image because like I mentioned earlier, visitors click more often when there's an image included. So you absolutely should have an image here. And I align the image on the right side. And then last thing you wanna do is you wanna have your post title in here. And whether you wanna have your post info as well, that's entirely up to you. I just have the post title. Um, show excerpt, I don't ha show any excerpt. But again, that's entirely up to you. And then I just have that as done and I click on save, okay? And now that we've saved this widget in here, you're gonna see that every time you add a new post, uh, especially in the beginning, you're gonna see new featured posts on your sidebar until you have four, and then it's gonna collect it by however you order them. So no matter where you are on your website, you're always gonna see these uh, on your right side there, okay? So that's kind of the sidebar is now developing. As we get more posts, this is gonna be bigger. Boom! 
So I went ahead and quickly published another three posts so that you can have a really good look at how cool of a site we've managed to create in the last 40 minutes. So if you look here on the home page, you have these really sort of attention grabbing headlines and you have the featured images attached to those posts. And then the sidebar is nice and filled out now. And as we create more posts, these posts will leave the home page but then the most recent posts will be shown here. So you're not gonna have this redundancy that you see now. You can set this up a lot better as you start building your blog. Now, if we go into the first post that we created here where we have the image and the video and all that, you're still gonna see this sidebar. This sidebar is on every single post of your website and it's what's going to get people to visit more than just one page and get you that Google love that you need to get more traffic. So we have our image, we have our video, we have all our posts, we have our sidebar. To me, it looks like we have the bare bones, sort of the setup of a really awesome, cool looking website. And we did it all within that 45, 50 minutes, right? So that to me, that is what I would call epic. Now, if you have any further questions, after this video is complete, you wanna know something else to add to your sidebar. If you see my site is still filled out a little bit more with some additional sort of like gadgets and features and all that kind of stuff. If there's anything else you wanna know about website development, sidebars, any of that kind of stuff, leave a comment in the comment section below and I will get to you, I promise. Sometimes I get as much as 20, 30 uh, follower or subscriber questions per day and I do my best to answer every single one of them. So if you leave me a question, I will 100% get back to you. Or if you just wanna leave feedback in the, on the video, that's welcome as well. Uh, if this video provided value for you, then please give the video a good old thumbs up. It would help me out a lot. And make sure you subscribe to my video because I have some exciting videos right on the horizon that I'm just about to publish. And it's very important that you stay up to date so that you can get those videos when they launch. So that's really it guys, that's the whole enchilada. You now know absolutely everything that you need to know to create a website. And if you don't, then you know that you can reach me below in the comment section and I can help you get the information that you need to know. Now in the next video that I create, I'm gonna be taking this one step further. So while this video focused on how do I create a website, in the next video, I'm gonna be sharing how to create a $5,000 per month online business that really only requires about five to 10 minutes of your time. Now I'm serious guys, I've done this for myself and I know that you can do it too. So this is gonna be a really exciting video for you to watch. Now if you haven't done so already, make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel because when this video launches, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you may end up missing out and you really don't want to miss out on this opportunity to change your life. And I'm serious, this video is gonna include lots of groundbreaking secret stuff that gurus usually charge thousands of dollars to teach their students and I'm gonna be giving it away for free. So make sure that you get that. As always, thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next one.